Three, two, one. Begin. <laughs> Hey folks, it's Eric and I again. Uh, I'm here with another video, this time a build video for Shane and Oryx, uh, another one of my favorite characters in the entire game. Uh, I'm going to be going over what I choose for their helix, uh, the gear loadout I give them, and a little bit about some tactics I use in PvP that will hopefully be of some use to all of you. So without any further ado, uh, let's jump right into level 1. This character is a tank, so beef them up even more. Fetch is a great skill, allowing you to control many duels, and having it activate an overshield on hit makes it that much better. Nothing frustrates an enemy more than getting your shield down, only for it to be replaced by an overshield, allowing your original shield to start recharging. Aura of Annoyance might be a better choice in PvE, but a warning to those thinking about using it in PvP. Enemies not only can see they're getting damaged, but they can hear the skill as it's happening closer to them. You want Shane and Oryx to sneak into a fight and surprise the enemy player before you start ripping them to shreds, not warn them. Meltdown. Now here's one of the ways I love using Stealth Strike. I wait for this Melka to think that she's getting away safely, but just at the right time, she falls into my trap. And everybody wins. Well, just you win. Melka doesn't win. Alright, so level 2. Slowing enemies is a huge factor in securing kills. That makes wait for the drop the better option here. There's nothing inherently wrong with choosing surprise party, but when compared to sneaking up on your enemies, slowing them, and refusing them to escape your melee attacks, it just doesn't compare. This leads me to a point I don't think a lot of people notice. Uh, Shane and Oryx's melee attacks hit twice per strike, accounting for both Shane's throwing punches as well as Oryx. Shane's boomerang is really nice, but you want to be attacking with your melee more often because of this, especially when an enemy is getting low on health. Okay, level 3. This is a tough one for me. They're both great options. Hulk out with your gen out is excellent because your shield recharges insanely fast, but in incursion and meltdown, enemies and minions end up very close to each other and bunched up. Boomerang bounce essentially turns Shane's boomerang into an area of effect attack. You can take down minion waves insanely fast and harass groups of enemies really easily with this option. I find myself choosing boomerang bounce more often. It mostly depends on my mood, but there's no wrong choice here unless you choose the mutation. Here's a good example of boomerang bounce in action. I just clear this mave of... mave? Mave of minions uh, pretty quickly and it brings me all the way to level 4 pretty fast. Alright, so level 4. Did I already mention fetches? really awesome and versatile because it is. I use fetch for four reasons. Shutting down enemy movement and skill activation, stopping an enemy from following me when I'm running away from battle, stopping an enemy from running away from me or my allies, and avoiding death by giving myself an overshield. Adding stun to fetch makes all of those things so much more effective. There's nothing wrong with shield steal, uh, what's yours is mine, but I'm very rarely using fetch on an enemy that has their shield. Usually I'm keeping fetch in my back pocket for when an enemy tries to run away with low health, or if they throw out a skill or ultimate out of desperation. Here's a good example. Melka's on her way to get out of here, but I stun her, and that's pretty much it for her. Yeah, I really I really picked on her quite a lot in this, this match. Okay, level 5. Always choose Immortal Aegis, whether you're in capture, meltdown, PvE, doing laundry, Going to the restroom, always pick this one. And for those of you who prefer Hulk out with your gin out at level 4, the one that gives you increased shield recharge, but I think like 105, uh, this goes really well with it and synchronizes nicely. Here's a little trick. If you ever get stunned, just turn it around on them and level up. Joke's on them. Yeah. <coughs> anyway, uh, level 6. Like I said earlier, I'm rarely using fetch on enemies who have their shields up. Stealth Strike can be used to escape from a battle when your health is low, so this just makes Shane and Oryx's survivability that much better. I'm sorry I don't have good KO footage for this next one, but this is Shane and Oryx just destroying things, so that's nice. All of these choices are great, including the mutation. Having tried all of these, I now typically go with the extra shield, making Shane and Oryx even more tanky. 
This also affects any overshields you're given, which I don't think a lot of people realize. For anyone who doesn't like Wrath at all, uh, you'll be happy to know Shane and Oryx pretty much dominates Wrath every single time. Um, there have been a few times where like, I've been a little outnumbered, and in this case this Wrath is outnumbered, but Wrath has nothing on Shane and Oryx, so beat him to death. Alright, level 8. I'm normally using Stealth Strike to sneak up on an enemy that has no shield, slowing them down, and getting some melee hits in before I stun them with fetch. This option allows me to start that combo off with my enemy at an even worse disadvantage. I notice a lot of people really like sustained stealth, however. If you're the sort of player to uh, sneak behind enemy lines and uh, destroy buildables and all that, uh, that's, a, that's a great choice for that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with picking that. And here's what happens to people who didn't realize that Galilea got nerfed. And now level 9. We've already talked about how versatile and awesome fetch is, and this just lets you use it more. Um, more overshields, more controlling duels. Uh, I don't love fetch for its damage or speed. I love it for the advantage it gives me in battle. So I ignore the other two options and always go with quite fetching. And last but definitely not least, level 10. For me, this is another no-brainer option. Without this, enemies can see your ultimate coming from a mile away and just get out of the way. Your ult functions as a zone controller until you get to level 10. Once you're at level 10, your ult drags enemies into it and slows them. The situations where you're using your ult on enemies with shields is so rare, the other option is pretty useless, even in PvE. Awesome, so now that we've done, gone through her entire helix, let's check out her gear loadout. I really like Shane and Oryx's legendary, uh, especially when I'm stacking that extra attack speed with another piece of attack speed gear. Um, shield recharge is always great for her as well. And her unique ability uh, is really excellent when your enemy is trying to run away after you've meleeed the crap out of them. Tossing a boomerang at them is going to do guaranteed tons of damage. It's a great way to secure kills. If you don't have her legendary, uh, shield recharge speed or like attack damage work great in its place. I also feel like giving Shane and Oryx uh, extra shield strength is a must, making them even more tanky. I put such a strong emphasis on attack speed because Shane and Oryx's overall DPS is pretty high. So letting you attack faster just increases how much damage you're doing. And attack speed also speeds up that uh, slow, those slow startup frames before she starts throwing boomerangs. And that pretty much covers it. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope that this video helped in any way. Um, please like and subscribe if it did, and I would love to hear your suggestions. Um, that would be great help for me. So go ahead and leave uh, your comments. Uh, let me know what you think, uh, what I should do, what I shouldn't. Um, and thanks again. See you next time. Power play. Only two hostiles remain.